Hello, I'm Sharon, and I'd like to welcome you to a brief interview with Joe Hoyle, lead author on his new financial accounting text published by Flatworld Knowledge. Hi, Joe. Hey, Sharon. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for spending some time with us today. I'm going to jump right in and uh, start asking you some of some of the questions we have for you. Um, you are the co-author of the number one selling advanced accounting textbook in the country. So why did you decide to also author a financial accounting textbook? Well, I, I love being a co-author in advanced accounting. We've probably sold over the last 30 years a half a million copies of that book, and I, I've loved having the chance to help senior accounting majors learn consolidations in government accounting. But I wanted to share my enthusiasm for accounting with people just entering the topic. And so I wanted to write a book, an intro book, because so many people, so, so very many people who take accounting in college only take one course. It's the only thing they're ever going to learn about financial accounting. So that's the book I decided to, to do next. And I've been very pleased. It gives me a chance to go to these um, usually sophomores in college and say, this is what makes financial accounting interesting. This is what makes it important. And this is why you should take your time to learn it. And you know what? You and I have, have talked before um, about the fact that you, you want to create a better type of textbook. So what do you think is the biggest problem with textbooks today? Well, I, my belief is, and I've talked to a number of professors, that the biggest problem with traditional textbooks is that students do not read them. The problem with that is if a student does not read the textbook, they come to class unprepared. Teaching becomes much more difficult if a student walks into the room unprepared. I want my students to walk in every class having read the book, having thought about the material, and ready to engage in a conversation about financial accounting. If you talk with students, they'll often complain that they pay fortunes for textbooks that they don't read and don't understand. You cannot have high quality education if you have books that students don't read, can't read. I think that really is one of the major problems in all education. You know, you're right, and, and again, you and I have talked about meeting professors, whether it's a AAA or out on campus, and, and so many of them will tell you, my students aren't reading you know, reading the textbook. My students don't read the textbook. And so tell, tell our listeners, why do you think students don't read their textbooks? Well, a lot of textbooks, or most textbooks, are, are broken into chapters, and the chapters are about 30 pages long. And the students can make it two or three pages without getting lost. Or they can make it three or four pages without getting bored. But most of those textbooks are written for people who already understand the topic. If you're taking a class, it means that you do not understand the material. And it's virtually impossible for a student to read a 30-page chapter and not get lost and not get bored. So what typically happens from my uh, perspective is the student will read a couple pages and just quit, give up. And the next chapter, they will read the, even those pages. So after a couple of chapters, they just find the book to be completely useless. So when they walk into class, what they are going to do is to hope that the teacher will explain the material to them, and they'll simply sit there and take notes. I don't like passive education. I don't like students who just take notes. But if they don't read the textbook, what else can they do? No, you're right. You're right. So tell everybody the first way that your book is different. Well, when I first started to write the book for Flat World Knowledge, my thought was, how can I get away from that 30-page uh, chapter? So what I've done is this, and I'll start off by saying I've taught in college for 38 years. And starting in 1991, I went to a Socratic method of teaching accounting. And so since 1991, I've taught every class every day by a question and answer format. And it has worked wonderfully well for me. So what I did was, I and C.J. Skinner, who's the other author, wrote the entire textbook in a question and answer format. So instead of being 30 long pages that a student has to get their way through, it's question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. And I view the questions and the answers as a guide. I don't view this as a textbook in a traditional sense. I view it more as a guidebook, that the questions and the answers lead the students through the material in a logical sequence. 
I'm a big believer in sequencing material for better understanding. So when a, a teacher thinks about my textbook, instead of thinking about a 30-page chapter, what I would prefer is to think about a 40 question and answers that are sequenced to lead the student through inventory, depreciation, long-term liabilities, and topics like that. And I believe then the students will find that much more understandable and be able to read the chapter and then walk in the class ready to talk about it. No, that's fantastic. And we know how, how much easier and, and, and inviting it is to be able to kind of move through chunks of information that are that are more digestible, which is what oh, of this sounds like. So what else are you doing to help students successfully read your financial, financial accounting textbook? Well, I worry about students needing feedback. If you're a college student, you read something and you're never completely sure you understand it. And there's always this, am I going in the right direction or am I going in the wrong direction? So in my own teaching, I'm a big believer in ongoing feedback. So what we have done is that virtually every page, we embed a multiple choice question. So a student, for example, will read a question, read the answer, and then they can click on a link and up will pop a multiple choice question that fits right in with that previous question and answer. They read that question, they have four choices, they give their choice, and then immediately they'll get my or CJ's answer to that question. So they don't have to wait to see if they understood something. And, and writing those multiple choice questions was very, very important because they had to tie in perfectly to what material had just been covered. This wasn't a question of where we hired grad students to come back later and put in the multiple choice questions. We wrote those at the same time we wrote the rest of the book. So when you think about a chapter, when you think about, for example, accounts receivable, what a student would do is to get question, answer, multiple choice question for feedback, question, answer, feedback, question, answer, feedback. I don't think that that, I think, I personally think that's a system that just makes good sense. I think it makes good educational sense. Compare that to the way most textbooks are written. 30 pages, good luck is what they're done. We guide students and we give them feedback to make sure they can make it through the material. And so what's the first thing a student will find when they begin to read your financial accounting textbook? Well, we understand that students have, have gone through a lot of textbooks, and they're, they're often quite skeptical. And I want to convince the student from the very beginning of every chapter that there's a good reason to read the material. So every chapter begins with a short video, three, five, six, seven minutes that either I or C.J. Skinder do. And the purpose of that is to tell the student what that chapter covers and why it's important to them. We believe that if you sell the student on the importance of the material, then the battle's already won because they then will read the material. If they understand why it's important, they will do it. One of the problems that students often have is they're just not convinced that reading the chapter is really worth their time. They have a lot of things that, are, that call on their time and we want to make sure that they believe that reading that chapter is the most important. So we start with these wonderful videos at the beginning of every chapter to get the students interested, excited, enthusiastic about what's to come in that chapter. No, that's very good. That's very good. So a little bit of a technical question here is we're still talking about the body of the chapter. How do you cover um, IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards? Well, that's becoming such a major issue in accounting education. It's hard to go to any conference without hearing just lots of discussion of IFRS and how it should be covered, especially since here in the United States, U.S. GAAP is still the appropriate standard, but everyone feels that over the next few years, there'll be a gradual evolution to IFRS. So what we did was, I have a friend who is a partner with PricewaterhouseCoopers, and he is an IFRS expert. So in about two-thirds of the chapters, we would include a, a half-page, usually, discussion with that partner about how U.S. GAAP differs from IFRS. As an example, in the chapter on intangible assets, we talk about the accounting for research and development. In U.S. GAAP, that's done a very particular way. IFRS does that differently. 
So in the body of the book, we talk about U.S. gas. But in this side question with the partner from PricewaterhouseCoopers, he explains how IFERS is different. So instead of kind of trying to merge these two and confuse the students, it's very clear that what U.S. GAMP is doing, it's also very clear what IFERS is doing if and when the United States switches to an IFERS system, which is probably inevitable will happen. Very good. No, very good. So how do you close out each of these very exciting and um, easily flowing chapters. In my classes, I don't want students just to read the material. I want the students to think about the material. In colleges, one of the buzzwords is critical thinking, and that's easy to say, but it's not necessarily easy to do in a class. So what we do in our textbook is that every chapter is closed out with another video. And in that video, we basically ask the students to tell us what they believe the top five most important things in the chapter were. For example, if the chapter's on statements, cash flows, what were the five most important things? If it's on bonds payable, what were the five most important things? We want the students to go back and, and consider, or to think, or evaluate might be a better term, what they've read. It's not just about reading. It's about evaluating what was most important in that material. And then we have a countdown of what we believe are the five most important things from each chapter. Now, we tell the students that they can disagree with us. In fact, we kind of like that. But we want to get that kind of conversation going. In my own classes, when I teach here at the University of Richmond, I will often stop class and simply say, you read a chapter last night. Tell me th the three most important things. I like for students to do that kind of thinking rather than simply just memorization. Some things are more important. What did you think they were? Now that's, again, again a, a great feature to, to your new text. And kind of on that note, I, I think about the fact that you've published here with Flat World Knowledge and you know how proud we are and how excited we are to have you. And I also think that you could have published this book with anybody. Um, so what made you choose Flat World? Traditional textbooks, I don't think have evolved very quickly. In fact, the book I use at Intermediate County looks an awful lot like the book I used when I was a student in Intermediate County in 1968. Textbooks have not evolved. I got to the point, having taught for so many years, that I wanted to see textbooks evolve. I call my book or I, CJ in my book, the book of the 21st century. I wanted to write a book that was a, was a step forward in textbooks. Unfortunately, the traditional textbook companies are not very innovative. And I wanted to go with a company that I believe would have the courage and the innovation and the creativity to do something different, to do something better, to move textbooks and therefore education forward. And I have been delighted to work with Flat World Knowledge. They have been great. They've encouraged us to do stuff that would simply not be allowed by other textbook companies. Most companies simply want a heavy paper book that looks like every other heavy paper book. I wanted something that I thought was better. And with that goal, Flat World Knowledge was the perfect company for us. Guaranteed. Couldn't be more pleased with them. Oh. And we feel the same about you and CJ. We, we, we're really excited to have this book in our, um, in our library, of course, of book options, I should say. And um, we're delighted to be working with you, Joe. Thank you for your time today, for your dedication to this course, your discipline, and to your students. And um, with that, thank you very much, and have a good day. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.